Well, Penguins and the Maple Leafs, second time this year. They met on October 26th in Toronto. The Leafs beat the Penguins by a score of 4-1. to one. The Penguins have three straight home wins. They've won five out of six in front of those sellout crowds here at Consol Energy Center. There's our Kia starting goaltender tonight. Marc-Andre Fleury, he's a day short of a birthday as he'll celebrate that tomorrow for Marc-Andre Fleury, 13-7 and seven right now in the season, looking to get back in the winning category against the Hyundai starting goaltender, Jonathan Bernier, and the Leafs got toasted, 6-0 coming off that slacking. That was Reimer and Nett, and boy, both goaltenders have been fantastic at 9.34 save percentages. Randy Carlisle wants his team to play more in-your-face hockey, coming off a 6-0 loss to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Dan Bilesma really enjoying uh, playing in front of the home fans. Uh, all those sellout crowds have come during his era. Boy, it's amazing, really. And you look at uh, Nazem Kadri there. He'll be taking the face off here. The Leafs starting with Kadri, Clarkson, and Mason Raymond. Yeah, Clarkson almost didn't get in the starting lineup today. He was hitting warm up, knocked down by his own teammate shot right in the foot. Yeah, I saw him going down the runway, hobbling a bit. The Penguins, Anglin shoots it in the save made. He's paired up with Olimata. And the Malkin line on with Jokinen and James Neal. The Leafs have great speed. And Kadri shooting the puck. They love to come flying into that Penguin zone off the rush. He's been very dangerous and difficult for the Penguins to handle. They're 5 2 and 2 in their last nine against Pittsburgh. Now on the right wing, it's Jokin. Shoot it. And the save made by Bernier. They're going to try to get it his own rebound. Now Bernier tried to play the puck. Malkin took it away from him. And James Neal's going to go get it out to Ole Mata. Pokes it back down the wall for Gino. And then wanders off his stick to center ice. Bernier unaware that Malkin was fishing around the front of that net and almost got in there and stole one off him. Here's Crosby firing off the blocker of Bernier and up into the netting here. David Clarkson is starting lineup for the Leafs. This is what happened in warm-up. That shot right there in front of the net. Kuhlman knocking him down with that one. And boy, he went off there not feeling very well. Clarkson right at the end of that warm-up. Didn't know if he'd be in the starting lineup. And he brings that nuts and bolts that the Leafs are looking for in a game like tonight after they got shellac 6-0. Orpik with a shot. He's paired up with Chris Letang with Paul Martin on the shelf for another four to six weeks with a broken tibia. He suffered in the third period, blocking a shot in Boston the other night. So Letang has been reunited with Brooks Orpik as the top pair for the Penguins. And Flurry shuffling into the corner. A centering pass goes behind the intended receiver, Kessel, and the Penguins come back. Kessel's got to get back to make it a three on three. Pass across, and there is Kessel. Back checking, stealing, and moving it ahead now to Bozak. And he's offside on himself as he enters the Penguin zone. Take a look at our Rivers Casino tips to win. Well, you better get everybody involved. You got a lot of new faces. Spread that wealth around. Not just James Neal who scored four straight. Magna part of that combination with Connor and company. Those new faces and 300 straight sellouts feed off this crowd here. Consol Energy Center. Brandon Sutter, the third line center with Connor on his left and Andrew Ebbett on his right. That's the Penguins' third line tonight against the Leafs. Connor working the corner. And Sutter comes out of there with it for a moment. Andrew Ebbett has a lot of experience at the NHL level. Taking the puck now behind the net is Brandon Sutter. Ebbett playing in his 192nd NHL game. Shoots the puck from a sharp angle and Bernier to save. Ebbett centers now. Connor, he scores! Chris Connor, welcome back to Pittsburgh. Wow, Emmett, Connor, Sutter in the corner. Sutter keeping the puck alive. Connor with that back shoulder hit. Love that. Get the puck to the net. The Penguins are doing it, firing it from bad angles. The rebound coming right back. Connor is so strong on his skates. And he's able to finish it off over Bernier. What a great shift by that Sutter combination put together this morning by Dan Bosma. And everybody does get involved. Like Andrew Ebbett, just getting that puck to the net. Putting it back and then centering it for Connor to, who scored the goal. So, this Connor with six goals, 11 points, and 15 games for the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Penguins. He's up here and 
Makes an impact on his very first shift. I think we've already had six shots. I bet you three are from the goal line in this game. Just getting the puck to the net. The Leafs give up a ton of shots. He's been outshot on average 35.6 to 26.2 per game. They've allowed 35 or more 15 times. They've had four games where they've allowed over 40 shots. And they had a 50-shot game two games ago against them. And already the Penguins, as Bobby said, was six. That reverse shoulder hit by Chris Connor. Boy, is anybody, he does it as well as anybody that I've seen in a Penguin uniform in a long time. He's able to use that reverse shoulder hit. Look out! Empty net! And Mason Raymond couldn't find the puck. Flurry was behind the net, and he breathes a giant sigh of relief. Well, David Clarkson was on his backhand, but he still had ample time and opportunity to put that in by Marc-Andre Fleury. He just couldn't turn the wrist over and put it into the Yanni cage. Simone Dupre on the ice for the Penguins. He's paired up with Matt Niskanen in his return to the Penguins lineup. Dupre with it. And Dupre wrists it off a stick and off the glass. Raymond banks it off the boards, but right to with Denny Malkin. Back out to Dupre again. His shot. And Bernier able to control the puck. No rebound. And there'll be a faceoff to the right of the Leafs goal. Well, no rebound there, but there was a rebound off that Ebbett bad angle shot. It came right back to him, and he was able to put it right onto the tape of Connor. And Connor, boy, elevating that puck over Bernier. And here's Fleury. Miscommunication. Clarkson misses the wraparound there. That's where you have to talk to the goaltender. Talk, talk, talk. Communicate back there on defense. Boy, Connor, he put it where goal scorers put it, up and over the pad and glove of Bernier, who got across with the left leg, but Connor made no mistake. Now off the faceoff, it's Kunitz with it, turns the corner. Kunitz tried to shoot it, and uh, he tried to get himself a different shooting angle, and Fanuk was ready to block that shot by Kunitz. Penguins continue to control the puck on the wall, though. Kunitz gets it again. Kunitz center. Here's Crosby. Backhand shot is stopped by Bernier, and a good glove save. Sid gave him a couple things to think about there in front of the goal. Wow, that was kind of sick. He was stick handling in a phone booth. I thought he was going to turn it to the forehand. So did Bernier. So did everybody. How do you leave him alone? And Bozak had to stay with him. He decides to go back to the backhand. That down low coverage there. Bozak to defense. And boy, Kunitz and Fanuf. They're getting to meet each other quite early in this game. Early domination by the Penguins again as the puck is dumped in and it's an icing call. Take a look at what the Penguins have done in first periods and the results have not always been good. Uh, in fact, most of the time when they've dominated, they haven't been able to cash in. Fortunately tonight, they get a goal from Connor early, but look at the shots, the differential, and then the final scores in these games against these goaltenders. And uh, most recently, Brodeur 10-3 in shots, then the other night, Tuka Rask and the Penguins did end up getting a point in that game in Boston, but they're not able to really take full advantage of the domination early by getting goals. That's why it's nice to see Connor get one here. Yes. And Malkin out with Crosby on the ice here. And Kunitz. Bozak with it, trying to get it in front. And it's right there. A backhand try by Van Riemsdyk. I don't think he got much on it. Fleury able to find the puck and cover it up. And boxing out on Van Riemsdyk was his future Olympic teammate, Brooks Orpik. Now Kessel was there as well. Maybe the attended puck receiver right there as he shoots it and it goes across to the skate of Orpik right to the feet of the goaltender Fleury. I don't know how you really count that a shot and really it isn't. So they might take that one off the board. They have one up on there for Toronto. Really wasn't. But Clarkson, the best chance on that mishap, the miscommunication behind the net. Penguins lose the draw. Ranger with a slap shot and a blocker save made by Fleury. And the puck jumps up into the netting off the equipment of Marc-Andre Fleury. Fleury 9-2 on home ice with a 1.54 goals against average and a 941 save percentage. And he's 23-3 in his last 26 home starts. Penguins are 12-1 when they score first, 3-8-1 when they don't. And the Leafs are four and five when they don't get the first goal. You know, seeing Andrew Abbott, Bobby, he wears the same number that Max Talbot wore, and sometimes he reminds me of him, the way he gets in on the four check and the way he skates. And that full beard. <laughs> there he is, hitting Ranger. That's what I'm talking about, number 25 of the Penguins. He takes a straight line into the offensive zone on the four check, just the way Talbot used to do. Here he is again, dumping the puck up into the Toronto zone. Abbott is 30 years old. This is his sixth NHL club. 
Stepping up is the break. Good solid body check on Peter call. Holland, and they're going to get him for interference here. Yes, they are. I'm going to deem the puck had gone by. And number 47, minor penalty interference. Simone Dupre wanting to get involved in this hockey game early. The puck goes through his legs and takes out his man on the wall. A little late, and that's why it's interference. So Dupre goes to the box, and Simone Dupre was taken off the top power play unit in Wilkes-Barre. 13 straight games, he didn't even play on the power play. He ended up on the second unit most recently. They wanted him to concentrate on his defensive game there. And he was doing a great job, too, in that category. Plus 14, up, at least score here, right off the hop. And that was deflect, deflected in by JVR right in front of the net. He's the big body that the Leafs have been looking to get. They were acquired him from Philadelphia. And right off the faceoff, James Van Riemsdyk is going to turn the puck over. Pressure on Orpik. The puck goes up the wall. It's kept in. 21 goes right to the front of the net. Wow. And he redirects that with the front of his blade. He's got a, that good body, net front presence. We talked about it in the opening. And there he is, 21 from the Super Bowl, presented by Allegheny Health Network. You see him deflecting that puck by Mark andre Fleury. So the Penguins allow a Boston Bruin power play, one for one the Bruins were, and they allow a goal here against the Leafs. They had killed nine straight before that on home ice. Just like that off the draw, the Leafs make it a 1-1 game, and Van Riemsdyk is tricky around the front of the net. You know, those penguin clears, you like to get that clear high off the glass if you can, and Orpik wasn't able to do that. He got pressured by Van Riemsdyk a little bit in the corner. The penguins did not have good, real good point pressure either on that penalty kill off the faceoff. Faceoff to the left of the Toronto goal. Eight shots for the Penguins, three for the Leafs. Crosby wins the draw to the reach of Latang. Kessel in a foot race with Latang. <laughs> he can fly Kessel. And that puck bounces over his stick. Now Orpik back, winds it up the near side for Dupuis. And the near side, Dupuis looks for it. Going to get it to the leap line. A lead pass directed in by Bozak to the corner. Crosby goes back to play it. Around for Latang. He got it up the wall to Kunitz. So down to Brooks Orpik. Orpik has to go back and get it now. Latang has it. Kunis dumps it in. Gunnarsson back to play. Good hard, solid check on him by Dupuy, but Gunnarsson just bounced off that check and has the puck. Now he goes down again and gets back up and plays it one more time. So Dupuy with a couple solid body checks, but in both occasions, Gunnarsson kept the puck. Now Clarkson with a shot, steered away by Fleury to the corner. Clarkson takes it behind the net. Former Devil sends it back into the corner from Nazem Kadri and now to Mason Raymond. He steps out, looks for Clarkson going to the net. Look at all that traffic around Fleury. Two Leafs in the paint as the Penguins are able to get the puck to center. Fleury's water bottle's in the corner just to the left of Mark andre Fleury fell out of the water bottle holder on top of the net. Morgan Riley, 19-year-old defenseman of the Leafs, is number 44. So we have two 19-year-old D-men on the ice. One of them just went down. Ole Mata gets back up, pokes it up the near side. And out of his own zone comes Juicy Jokinen. Jokinen oh. over the line. He's got Neal with him. Malkin joining the rush. Jokinen centers. And it goes bouncing right past Neal and Malkin. And a collision now as Jokinen collided with Clarkson coming back into his own zone to play the puck. Jokinen okay as he goes back to the Penguins bench and the Leafs will start from their own zone. Good hit out here. Clarkson on Mata. Then Malkin went in there and chased it Clarkson. And Clarkson went after Jokinen. Now down the right side it's Sutter trying to cover the net. Centers up. Pokes his wide of the goal. Right on the doorstep. Andrew Ebbett again. Ebbett, Connor, and Sutter with another <laughs> threat there to the Leafs as uh, Ebbett just poked it wide of an empty net on the right side of the goaltender, Bernier. Boy, Ebbett, Ebbett sticks day. He was just uh, obstructed a little bit as he went there, but what a strong move by Ebbett driving to that far post, and that's Sutter, Ebbett. Connor combination looking pretty darn good. Let's take a look at the hits on the last shift. Mata went back for the puck. Clarkson, he's going to try to impose his will on these guys. Malkin gets in here and says, get out of it. Leave the little guy alone. Or the young guy, but not the little guy. And then there's Clarkson coming back at Jokinen. Some good stuff here in a 1-1 hockey game. That's when the draw. Orpik to Latang. Try to move it to Dupuis right away. He gets it back. Latang. Back to the corner. Sends it behind the net to Kunitz. 
Students in front for Crosby. Jammed it wide. Now Latang quickly moves it out to Dupuis. Dwarfic, his shot blocked. The Kunitz able to get to it. Works it to the corner. Crosby takes it. Sidney Crosby to Brooks Orpik, his wrist shot, and Bernier gets way out into the hole to glove that puck and hold on to it. Crosby tripped over the back of the goal cage. Well, it's 1 1 here in Pittsburgh. Sutter, Ebbett, Connor to put the Penguins on the board, but JVR with a power play marker to tie it. 60, a standing room only sellout, and the 300th consecutive sellout. Fans of Penguins, thank you for giving us 300 amazing consecutive sellouts. Well, they just honored the crowd here and uh, thanking them for 300 consecutive sellouts. Brought to you by Day Automotive. We take a look at this great day for hockey here in Pittsburgh. The streak began back on Valentine's Day of 07. Look at that total attendance. <laughs> That's a lot of body staggy. That's a lot of turnstile clicks. Yeah, and one of our biggest fans, 90-year-old Laverne Briggs, got to say hi to her here and get well soon, Laverne. We're thinking of you. One of the five million plus fans. Last 300 sellouts. This is Gunnarsson into the Penguin zone. He lost the puck. Tang tried to get it out. It's held in by the Leafs. Bozak on the near side, spinning away from Malkin. Gives it to Kessel. Kessel stripped of the puck nicely as Neal tried to get it out, but he couldn't do so. The Leafs recover the puck, and in behind the net is Bozak. It's cycling by the Leafs. Gunnarsson far side. Fanuf with it. Reset and it's off a stick and then the shot stopped by Fleury. Oh my was that ever a close call of Kessel getting the puck on a ricochet right to his stick and it's amazing Fleury could track that puck and make the save. And, and Kessel knew what he wanted to do. He tried to shoot that hard hard on the ice as that puck came off the pads or the bodies in front and somehow stuck underneath the pad of Fleury. The legs are open. Kessel is trying to go down underneath them and that maybe the knee pad. Now below those pads that are two inches shorter, there's knee pads. And all the goaltenders have been experimenting with those knee pads, talking about those things with Zakoff this morning. He said, yeah, hey Whitmore in the NHL, they may regulate them next year. But those knee pads are stopping pucks if they get by the knee, uh, the, the pads stay. Now the puck is cleared and uh, the Leafs trying to dump it out and regain control here, handled by Mark Frazier. Over to Cody Franzen. Now to Clarkson over the line. Clarkson with Raymond and Kadri. Jason Magna trying to slip a check down there in the corner. At least uh, trying to be really physical on the Penguins here. Seems to have found their legs after a tough start. And over to the far side goes Raymond. Raymond left it there for Kadri. Kadri works it to the right point. Cody Franzen, no risk one. He can score, but he hasn't yet this year. Franzen with no goals. They've done 28 without. And now the Leafs. Fraser dumps it to the Penguin zone, and only Mata has it. Up the near side, Sutter. Got it to center ice. Magna trying to find it there, and Sutter steps to the puck. Works it along for Ole Mata, who dumps it into the Leafs zone. 11 shots for the Penguins, four for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Lurie stops it for Matt Niskanen. Niskanen and Dupre, the pair for the Penguins, as the puck is sent up the near side. So Dupre takes a penalty on one of his first shifts of the game, and the Leafs cash in on the power play. It's a tough way to start again here in the NHL for Dupre. Puck off the side of the cage, and they battle for the puck. Kuhlman's in front of the net. Instead, it goes behind over to the near side where it's reversed by Jay McClement to the corner. Fullerman gets in after. Backing off is Morgan Riley. Now Bozak, the centerman, watches Connor go to the net. He shoots it from the sharp angle again. And on the short side, Bernier able to make the save. And the Leafs able to clear the puck back into the Penguin zone. Great speed there by Connor, realizing the officials are going to call interference. You just chip it around. The defenseman can't touch you. There goes Kessel again. Kessel. In the slot, fires the puck and it hit a man in front. Sliding down through the slot to block that shot. There's Dupre. Now Kessel again works it down low. And Reemsdyke sends it behind the net. Bozak with it there. Now Kessel will take it. 
And the Leafs are buzzing right now in the Penguin zone. Kessel try to get it back to the net. Crosby flagged it down. He takes the pass from Dupuy and enters the Toronto zone. Crosby has Kunitz heading to the net instead. Dumps it to the corner. And Dupuy will take it there. Battle on the boards and Crosby again. Try to get it to Latang and it comes to the line. Good play by Orpik to hold it in, but now the Leafs. Kessel comes to center. He needs to change as he dumps the puck into the Penguin zone. He'll turn back towards the Leafs bench. 8.38 to go in the first period. Danger shift there. Bill Kessel and company. James Neal for Malkin. Neal to Malkin. Malkin shoots it. And it's blocked in front. That's up here, three on one. Yep. England, the lone man back. It's Bozak with a question goes to the net. Bozak shoots, and it goes off the goal post. And in, and it is a goal. So the Leafs have scored to make it two to one. Derek Engel had found himself all alone with three Leafs coming at him. What did we say earlier about the Leafs being so dangerous off the rush? Wow. Malkin's dancing in the middle of the ice. All the Penguins are in the front of the net. Neil and Jokinen, as you look back, how many Penguins are on the ice? Only four? Yeah. See, somebody just jumps on the ice right now. Unbelievable. The Penguins only had four guys on the ice. Anglin was the lone guy back. Three fours. Take a look at the left side of the screen. Up high by the blue line. There's the fifth man jumping on the ice. Anglin's by himself. Only one defenseman on the ice as the Leafs turn the puck over and go the other way. Three on one. So that doesn't happen that often. But with some new bodies and new faces, you've got to communicate. The Penguins weren't sharp on the bench. Neal to the goal, and it goes right through the goaltender and out the other side. Mata with a blast and a save made by Bernier. And now the puck clear. Derek Anglin will take it. Now that puck hit a goal post and then went in the twine and came back out. I wasn't sure if it hit both posts or not at first. But it was in the net, off the goal post. Oh, boy. Todd Reardon is just shaking his head still behind the Penguins bench. And, and you know, you, you call names, and it's up to the players to, to get on the ice. Loose in front of the net. Look out, McClement there tries a backhand shot. Flurry down. The puck ends up behind the goal. Well, this reminds me of a lot of games we've seen between these two teams in this building. The Leafs ever dangerous. And you just cannot give them opportunities off the rush. They'll burn it. Now McClement with it. The other thing is, it doesn't matter. Even if, if you're an astute hockey player, you're sitting on the bench. I don't care if you haven't played. Remember Randy Gillen? He changed for a goaltender in the playoffs when nobody else did and scored a big overtime goal that led to a Stanley Cup. And if you notice, you only have four guys on the ice. Just jump on the ice, regardless of whether you're up or not. Joe Vitale works the corner. Friends it on him, and Bozak able to work it up the wall to Phil Kessel, and he comes back. Kessel swinging wide and slowing down a bit, dumping it wide of the net. Over to get it is Vitale with Bozak on him. Bozak just returned to the lineup. He's been out for the Leafs. They were hurting up the middle for a while. Missed 12 games with a hamstring injury. Now it's Adams with it on the right wing into the Leafs zone. Adams trying to get around Morgan Riley. Codry took it away and sent it ahead. Slides back into the Penguin zone. McRae back to Flint. Clarkson on him. Miskinen sends it up the wall. And now to Jason Magnum. Dumped in by Kunitz. How much of an adjustment do you think it is for Dupre, Bob, to go from the speed of the AHL to playing in a game like this against the Leafs? Well, it's definitely always, it's always an adjustment when you come to the National Hockey League level, but it's not as if Simone Dupre hasn't played here before, a plus 14 in his career at this level. On the ice right now with Matt Niskanen, and I'm just, I'm still wondering and puzzled why there wasn't another Penguin defenseman on the ice and how the Penguins missed that assignment. Doesn't happen too often, and it costs them here in this game. 2-1 Toronto as you go to break. 2-1 here in Pittsburgh for the Leafs, and Chris, uh, it's not too often you guys miss an assignment. A bad line change there for the guys? Yeah, I didn't see. It looks like they had odd man rush. Uh, maybe something off one of the changes, but they've been keeping us in our end. That's why guys are tired getting off and not getting back on the ice, so do a better job of the puck in their end. Speaking about keeping guys tired, uh, you know, Phaneuf's always on Crosby. You take it upon yourself to try to get to the body on a guy like that and slow him down? Uh, he plays lots of minutes. you got to make sure you play hard on him. Every time he goes back for a pass, you, you know, put a body on him. He jumps up with a play, put a body on him. So we'll be trying to key on that tonight. Thanks, Chris. Now the uh, Penguins take control of the puck in their own zone. I guess that's one way a winger can help the other guy on the ice, Bobby, and not just scoring. Here's Kunitz with it now down the wing. Shoots it up high from a sharp angle. Gets it back. Trying to go across to Sid. 
And Crosby knocks it out of midair. They say not a high stick on the puck as he moves it out to the point. Orpik with shot off the net. And Dupuy sent it behind the goal. Kessel there for Toronto. And stepping up is Or Orpik on Kessel. He rocked in right in front of the penalty bench. Kessel turns and goes back to his bench. As Crosby takes the lead pass over to Orpik for Tunitz. Now back to Brooks Orpik. The tang with it, 5-11 to go in the first period. The Leafs up by one. Connor trying to get around Franzen. Connor to the corner, sends it back around near side for Andrew Evett. Evett reverses it behind the net for Connor. They are really banging bodies right now. This line's been as good as any for the Penguins here in the first period. Sutter, Evett, Connor. And look at them digging to the corner. They win the battle. Yes, and a quick shot taken by Sutter was blocked. By Franzen, after the point, Mata's drive, and Franzen with a quick stick blocks another one and moves it out to Nikolai Kuhleman, former teammate of Evgeny Malkin, and Magneto Gorsk dumps it in behind the goal and gets after the puck. Derek Engel in there, though, shuffles it along for Andrew Ebbett, and Ebbett sends it back in behind his own net to Oli Mata. Love that play by Ebbett. He was deep in his own zone. He couldn't backhand it out of the zone, so he went back and used his defense to exit the puck. That was a veteran play. Puck is dumped in by Kadri behind the net, stopped by Fleury. Over to the near side of Derek Engelin. Out of the reach now of Jokinen. Ranger back to the net, saved by Fleury. Clarkson with it. Engelin gives him a ride, and Bozak has it behind the net. Stripped to the puck beautifully by Evgeny Malkin, and he starts it up ice. Moving into the right wing now to Neal. Back to Gino over the line. Drops it go right back to Neal, and that didn't work. A turnover inside the line. Kadri goes the other way. Centers for Clarkson, and offside is called on the Toronto Maple Leafs. 15 shots for the Penguins, 8 for the Leafs, but the Penguins are down by 1. 2-1 Leafs here in the first period, and while the Penguins were on the road this past weekend, there was hockey being played here at Consol Energy Center. 14 teams affiliated with NHL clubs, including the Mighty Penguins, took part in the USA Hockey Slip Classic, which held its championship for three different classes on Sunday right here at Consol. Lots of fun, not only here at Consol Energy Center, but the preliminary rounds being held at Robert Morris University, guys. Great to see that, man. Enjoying the game of hockey. You love it. Now the face-off at center ice, and Joe Vitale will take it against Jared Smithson. Vitale winning the face-off back to Matt Niskanen. At least changing right away. We get a different line out against the Penguins' fourth line. Capre dumps it in behind the net, out of the reach of Vitale. Now oh, it's Niskanen shooting the puck off a stick. Morgan Riley takes off, and a good skater here, 19 year old. Yeah, we got a good soft check by Simone Dupre, riding him right into the boards. That was an interference. That was an excellent body check. And now there's Ranger with it. Cross for Riley, back to Ranger. Ranger shoots it through traffic. Oh, that just missed. Adams over now. Tally looks for the puck. Back to the net, a blocker save by Fleury. Collision between Orr and Dupre. Dupre won that battle, shielding Orr from the puck. And now Jason Magna on the fourth line for the Penguins comes to center ice and dumps it into the Toronto zone. Great skating here by Dion Phaneuf. Tunis tried to cut it off in the neutral zone. Bozak left it though for Van Riemsdyk, who shot it just wide. Well, they're just missing on some of these long shots. Now well, back on the Penguins, it's Crosby to Dupuis. Van Riemsdyk angles him way away over to the fours. He sends it in behind the net. Crosby after it, overskated. And the Leafs send it up the wall. Latang trying to keep it in. Tunis looks for it. Latang under a little pressure here. And Kessel got a step on him. He kind of knocked him down so the Coons could get back to the puck. And handled there by Brooks Orpik. A lead pass for Dupuis. Directing it inside the Leafs line. And a big hit again on the near side by Orpik as he gave Kadri a bump. And Kadri checked his face after he was hit on the near side in front of the penalty box. Back to the net. Fleury able to hold the puck. And he will hold it. And another faceoff coming up in the Pittsburgh zone. During the intermission, which is brought to you by your neighborhood Ford store with Rob King and Jay Caulfield, Dan Potash will visit with Chris Connor, the Penguins goal scorer. And Jay will telestrate 
two to one Toronto with a minute 50 to go in the period. Jokinen coming off the ice Sutter back on for this face off and Malk and there's Orpik on Kadri. Prior to that we saw a big hit by Simone Dupre on Riley. Penguins switch up their face off configuration Clarkson goes to the top. So England goes to the middle of the ice. <clears throat> Pretty nasty hit by Orpik on Kadri and now the Penguins. Malkin comes back, looks to the right wing for Neal, drop past Amata, his shot deflected away from Annette. And Neal centered, a quick chance for Jokinen is blocked. And back comes Mason Raymond over to Kadri. Leaves it for Raymond. Taken away though by Ole Mata, sent it ahead. Malkin carries. Left side of Jokinen, slap shot, save made by Bernier. Malkin looked for the rebound, he's hit hard into the end boards by Mark Frazier, and then another shot by Frazier to Malkin as they skated away from the end boards. Derek Engelin dumps it right back into the Toronto zone. Jokinen will take it near side. To Malkin, he's open. Malkin shoots it. Trying to use the D-man as a screen, and Bernier able to make the save. Right into the bread basket, and Bernier, 934 save percentages for both goal turns coming in. Jokinen looked before he got that puck. He knew exactly where he wanted to go. The Leafs defenseman Franzen was flat-footed. Kenny Malkin has been paying a price on both ends of the ice over a stretch of, boy, 10 to 15 hockey games right now. His work ethic is tremendous. Four points behind Sidney Crosby for the scoring lead. One minute remaining in the period. And the Leafs work the puck to center and taken there by the Tang and trying to angle it through for Sutter. Gunnarsson stepped in the way of that. Connor overskates for a moment. And the Leafs content just to get it back to neutral ice. Under a minute remaining in the period. Boy, Kessel gets up the ice so quickly. Putting pressure on Orpik that time. Good, good. Morgan Riley takes it for Toronto. He's yet to score his first NHL goal. He comes to center. Van Riemsdyk able to direct it into the Penguin zone to the corner. But Tang just lifts it back to neutral ice. Bouncing puck. Dupuis takes it. He's got two minutes open. And backhands it wide of the goal. Dupuis after it. Over to play it as Crosby. Whips it back towards the net. Nine seconds to go in the period. Penguins with 17 shots on goal. The Leafs have 10. And it's the Leafs who are leading through the first 20 minutes of play. On goals by Van Riemsdyk on the power play after a faceoff and Nazem Kadri. Chris Connor, the goal scorer for the Penguins. Best line. Sutter, Connor, Ebbett for the Penguins, I think, in the first period of play. And everybody got involved, 17 shots. Let's go to Robin Jay. After one period of play, Toronto finds themselves on top of the Penguins 2-1. to one, But you can't blame some of the new faces for the Penguins once again, giving them a spark after being recalled from Wilkes-Barre Scranton. Let's go to Steigen Bob for the start of the second period. Guys. Well, throughout the era that Ray Shiro has been the general manager of the Penguins, he has done a great job in the offseason of finding guys who are kind of on the bubble between American League and NHL but have experience. I think that's exactly what we've seen here tonight. Guys 29, 30 years old, Bob, who could come up and play and have had some experience at the NHL level. Yeah, and that experience really paid off, I thought, on uh, the goal there by Connor. The way they worked down low, showed their strength. Connor with that reverse shoulder hit to create space for himself and then the finishing ability. Boy, that was some really good stuff there by that line. It, you can see they're not in awe of the situation. They want to come up here. They know they have performed at this level before. A lot of speed by Connor in that first period of play, and I thought it brought the best out of Brandon Sutter. I really like that line in the first. Well, that's a line you can relate to, Bob. Uh, guys who are not tall, but they're quick and gritty. Kind of like you were when you were a player in the NHL. Oh, you're always trying to prove people uh, that you belong. You know, you were always told growing up that you weren't going to be big enough to play in the National Hockey League. So. A lot of naysayers along the way, I'm sure, for those guys, for any hockey player for that matter, unless you're of the ilk of a Crosby or Malkin, those type of guys. What about Pasco Dupuis and Chris Kunitz? They were undrafted. They had to keep proving themselves, and that's what keeps them in the league even today at their age of 33 and 34. You know, you're always constantly proving yourself, trying to get more ice time and being put in situations where you can thrive. 
It says a lot about players too, Bob, doesn't it, that they could go to the American League and be leaders down there at that level, even though they, they would love to be playing at the NHL level. They don't hang their heads. They go down there and do their jobs. Yeah, well, and they know. I think it's great what the Penguins have done here along the line. A lot of guys, different faces have been up here in the National Hockey League. So if you're down there producing, they're going to bring you up here. You're going to get a shot. So be ready. And Simone Dupre get another uh, opportunity. He had to be disappointed when he was cut during after training camp, but made the most of his opportunity at American League level. And he was talking about that today, just saying, hey, look, you know, I'm I play hockey for a living, and I don't complain. I just do what I got to do to to get better. Yeah. Well, a good example of uh, stats that aren't right. I'm looking at the stats right now, and it has Simone Dupre with no hits in the first period of play. Are you kidding me? We had two great ones. Look out! They score right off the hop here again, and once again it's Van Riemsdyk right there as he slipped the puck around Mark Andre Fleury to give the Leafs a three to one lead. Just 13 seconds into the second period. Well, the Peng Penguins already had one blunder, miscommunication in the first period behind their own net. That should have been cashed in by Clarkson. Here's another one. Comes behind the net. Mark andre Fleury tries to shuffle that to Chris Letang. And that is right there, I, I'm not there, so I can't tell you the communication between Letang and Fleury. But Letang has got to yell loud and clear to Mark andre Fleury to get that puck around the glass and around the wall, and that didn't happen. It appeared that Mark Andre Fleury tried to play it to his defenseman, and we got a goaltender change. Fleury not happy at all. He kind of storms down the runway, smashes his stick once, twice as he goes down after he already tried to smash it on the goalpost. Three different attempts to break that stick, and none of them worked. And that's the kind of night it, it had been for Fleury. Whether or not he'll get an opportunity to come back in this game remains to be seen, but for the time being, Jeff Zatkoff is in goal for Dan Bilesman's Pittsburgh Penguins after Fleury turned the puck over again behind the net. Van Riemsdyk sniffing it out back there, breaking up his attempt to move the puck to his defenseman and ended up scoring the goal. So Van Riemsdyk with a pair in this game, goals 10 and 11 on the season for him, and the Leafs lead 3 to 1. Crosby with it, turned it, and right onto the tape of Phil Kessel, and he comes back with Van Riemsdyk. They play catch with a puck into the corner. It's taken by Chris Letang. Stolen away by Bozak. Man, wide open. And they score again. Kessel pounces on the puck and rips it past Zatkoff. A rude welcome for Jeff Zatkoff. And the Leafs make it 4-1. to one. And keep in mind, this is a team that lost 6 to nothing in their last game on home ice to Columbus. And you can pin this one on 58 right, right here. And Letang got overtaken. As that puck goes behind the wall, Letang's got it on his stick. But a four check there by Bozak is going to turn it over. And he separates Latang from that puck right here. That was a good four check. Latang didn't see him as he came behind the net. And he put it right onto the tape of Kessel. And that was one heck of a shot over the blocker of Zakoff, who had no chance whatsoever. He's just trying to warm up. Tough times for Latang right now. He's going to be at least a minus seven. I don't know if he was a minus in that first period. Malkin pushes it wide. He's got only one assist. And this is his 17th game of the season. I don't think he's 100%. He was injured in training camp. And he's certainly not playing at 100% in terms of his ability and what he's capable of giving you. It's been a tough start for him. I don't think I've seen a game in a long time where the Penguins have really uh, talking about self-inflicted wounds here so far in this hockey game. This big, big blunder that have led to the ultimate uh, sacrifice, and that's giving up a goal. Now it's Jokinen trying to get the puck, and the whistle blows here. There's going to be a slashing penalty coming up. Well, Neil's stick is broken in two. 18. 18 Pittsburgh, two minutes take slashing. The penalty. And he was looking for it the moment he came on the ice after the Phil Kessel had scored for the Leafs. He was looking to get into it with somebody. And there's the two hand on the stick in that downward motion. And James Neal will go to the penalty box.
Kessel, his 13th from Bozak, 42 seconds in. After Van Dreamsdijk had scored. So the Leafs up 4-1 to one here early in the second period. And now they have a chance to add to their lead as they got their power play on the ice for the second time. They already scored a power play goal, the first one of the game. Now Kessel takes it on the far wall. Van Riemsdyk's in front of the net. Kessel, Bozak, and Van Riemsdyk up front. Fanouf and Franzen, the shot by Franzen. And Jeff Zatkoff able to make the save and no rebound. Take a look at our UPMC Sports Medicine injury update, and it is uh, vast at this point. It just keeps growing game by game. Some big ones there. Bennett, Glass, and Martin, all huge contributors to the hockey team. Top six forward, Tanner Glass with a, really a great year this year. And Paul Martin. I wonder how this is going to affect his Olympic hopes. Four to six weeks is the length of the injury as they uh, describe it here right now. We'll see. Franzen with it. Enough for the wrist shot. Kicked out by Zakoff. Rebound Bozak. And that was blocked in front by Derek Engelin who then cleared the puck to the near wall. Crosby comes back for the Penguins. The first one was a redirection by JVR Van Riemsdyk again in front of the net. This time Zakoff had to make a big left pad save on him. Cody Franzen with it to the left side, and Fanuf takes it. Back to Franzen. Cross ice, Kessel, shot, missed the net. Franzen gets it off the boards and to quickly move it in front and ends up going back to center. And a lot of time for Phil Kessel, a little more space than he normally sees against the Pittsburgh Penguins. He's having a spirited game. And of course, Stag, you remember, this team was embarrassed, 6-0 in their last out in Toronto, and they're coming back. They've got 16 shots, four goals on 16 shots. Columbus had six goals on 22 shots after the Washington Capitals played the Leafs and registered 50 shots in the game and scored only one goal. <laughs> it's a crazy game, this game of hockey. It's more about opportunities and you know, how good the scoring chances are sometimes. Morgan Riley with a 10 seconds to go on the Neal penalty. Mason Raymond fires, and that's off a leg wide. Taken by Gunnarsson in deep on the play. In behind the side of the net. Clarkson goal. turns it off the goal post. Oh, boy, I thought that was inside the goal post and hit the pad, but apparently not. Wow. Very close. What a, what a strong move by Clarkson. Neal back on the ice for the Penguins, so they just barely killed him off and almost was a goal right at the end of the penalty. Now Derek Anglin with it over to the far side. Oh, Zankoff oh, no, just got run over by Kadri. Connery, he's done this before. He ran into a goaltender a few weeks back. Got suspended for a couple of games in that hockey game. And then this one here, Zakoff got his legs caught underneath him. Just caught it out of the corner of my eye. Nazem Kadri. Contacting Jeff Zakoff behind the Penguins net. Oh, yeah. You, you, you got it. You got to refrain from any contact with the netminder. Counter number 43, minor penalty, goaltender interference. So it is a goaltender interference penalty on Nazem Kadri. And the Penguins will put their power play on the ice. Ranked fifth in the NHL. Take a look at the goal post on that Clarkson move. What a strong move. Look at it. Oh, boy. Square off that goal post, and he tried to follow up on the rebound as well. Almost got that second crack. Peng was just able to clear Brooks Orpic in front. There's Randy Carlisle, the former captain, my first captain of the Pittsburgh Penguins. Former Norris Trophy winner. Kind of a growly guy sometimes, and uh, he's... <laughs> He's, he's one of those coaches that I'm sure a lot of players don't like, but uh, they respect, and they, he does get results, does he not? I think he's a he's a matchup guy, Bob. Have you noticed? You mentioned earlier. McClemon, he yeah, he wants McClemon on uh, Malkin. Malkin fires one, and McClemon blocked it, and now McClemon takes off. Latang prevents him from going to the net shorthanded. So Latang passes to Malkin, who left it for Neal. Back to Gino. Malkin cross ice. Crosby with a shot. Floating over to make the save was Bernier. Taken now by Malkin to Crosby to Neal. Back to Sid. Sid. Cross for Latang. Have to go back and get it. Backhands it down the boards. Taken there by Kunitz. Now to Neal walking in front. Hold off his stick. Out to Malkin. 
Now to Crosby and escapes. Try to go through the seam and a good read there by Mason Raymond who shoots the puck to make that uh, Jared Smithson shooting the puck the length of the ice here on the penalty kill. A minute 14 remaining on the penalty. As Latang comes ahead now for the Penguins. Lead pass off the stick of Crosby to the corner. Ranger goes back to play and leaves it in the corner. Frazier didn't get it out. Malkin. Latang just dumps it rink wide. Gino again. Now Kunitz for Malkin. Back to Latang. He fires and it's blocked. And it sails up into the netting behind the Toronto goal. So let's take a look at uh, Flurry and you know. He, his, his road record has not been great this year, and a huge difference between home and road. So what has happened to him tonight is really rare because he's 23 and three in his last 26 home starts, and you see the difference in the records. Save percentage, goals against average, very, very different. What's not rare is his uh, one loss record in his last nine game, nine decisions is three and six. So the wind's not coming quite as frequent as this Penguin team. Decimated with injury here right now. It's trying to find itself. Now we have a whistle and an icing call. They'll bring it all the way back into the Penguin zone. The Penguins are on the power play and they're guilty of icing. All about character here, though. It's the character builder right now for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Down by three here. So much time left on the clock. And boy, I, I've learned never, ever to sell this team short. Face a lot of hockey come. left. Yes, in there. yes, sir. I would be a little more comfortable if it weren't the Leafs because they've had a knack of playing well against the Penguins here in Pittsburgh. The Penguins are 8-5 and five in their last 13 home games against Toronto. That's five losses to the Leafs. And this is a team that we told you has led the league the last five years with 107 home wins. So the Leafs have handed them some losses during that stretch. And now Jokinen tries to go to Andy Ebbett. They come back for Jokinen. Out to the point now where Niskanen can't handle it cleanly and has to move it over to Olimata. Back to Niskanen. Sutter after the puck on the near wall. Penalty's over. Cobbery back on the ice. Kuhlman takes the puck. Out in center. Penguins have to hurry to get back. Ebba trying to get back to break up a possible two on one. And the centering pass by Cobbery, intended for McClement, never got through. And the Penguins go the other way. And it's Sutter closing in. Sutter looks back, finds Dupre. Simon Dupre, wrist shot. Save made. The rebound. Sutter gets to it. Sends it back in behind the net. Prey works down the wall, pinching in on Kadri, but the puck went by him, racing over to try to play it. It was Vitale. He fell down, and Colt Norris got it in front for Trevor Smith. And he goes flying into the net as he was checked from behind. I think it was Dupre coming back, trying to get into the play, and he took his man right into the goal cage. That's as hard as two players have gone into the, the net that I've seen at full speed. The lighter nets, just a shade lighter than they were last year. The puck's still going the same way. Four to one Toronto. We were just talking about Toronto head coach Randy Carlisle, who had 1,400 career penalty minutes, and a fair amount of them came during his playing days with the Penguins. Now, entering tonight's game, the Leafs lead the NHL with 21 fighting majors. They were first in that category last year at 44. And the Anaheim Ducks, who were also among the leaders, or Carlisle was their head coach. Uh, guys, like players, like coach? Well... You know, Randy was a tough customer, but he was mostly noted for his ability to play an all-around game. He was a very good offensive defenseman. He could control the tempo of a game as a player. And he was physical. He did not back down to anybody. But he was by no means what you would call a fighter. He was just a guy who was willing to go if he had to. And one of the last guys to play without a helmet in the NHL, Randy Carlisle. But I would say to Dan's point, yeah, hey, he doesn't mind his teams dropping the gloves. And he's had big teams in the Ducks and here in Toronto a couple of years ago. They took fighting lessons in the offseason. Ryan Perk was a guy who kind of created that in Anaheim, and Carlisle just took it from Anaheim right to Toronto. Now here's Orpik back to the front of the net, and out to center ice. Dumped back in by Anglin into the Toronto zone. Well, Anglin and Orp, boy, they just crossed paths right there. They've crossed paths before, haven't they? Talk about fighting. Here goes Dupre, skating well into the lead zone. His wrist shot up high, and Bernier makes the save. Heavy, hard shot. Right off the left shoulder. Over to the puck goes Chris Kunitz. Kunitz with it. Moves it out to the right point and Niskanen. He's drive and Bernier makes the save. Ozak with it. Send it back in behind the net. Back up the wall it comes. Dupre 
at center ice trying to prevent Colton Orr from going ahead. But now here comes Van Riemsdyk to the goal. Kunitz and Niskanen defending on him. He was unable to get a good shot away, but Van Riemsdyk has been a force. Now Kunitz with a high stick on the puck at center. Going back to play the puck is uh, Gunnarsson, and they'll bring it all the way back into the Penguin zone. Points per game versus Toronto. There's Gino, 178. Doesn't mind playing against the Leafs. Crosby, Ovechkin, Yager, and Heatley. And that's the most against any team, too. There's no other team that Malkin gets more points against on average than the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now Kunitz brings the puck ahead. With him is Jason Magna and Sidney Crosby. Kunitz turns in behind the net. Kunitz looks for Crosby in front. And you think the next goal could be huge, Bob, if the Penguins get it. Here's Mata with it. The shot deflected away from the net. And a penalty coming up. Gunnarsson doesn't like the call, but it looks like he's going to the box. Chris Kunitz felt uh, Gunnarsson step in his way. He went down, drew the penalty. Penguins 22 shots here so far in the game. I wouldn't surprise me if they get 50 by the end of this thing. They, they need them to get back into it. And Megna was out there with Kunitz and Crosby on that last shift. He's feeling a little uh, winded or a little pain. Penguins with a new PMC Sports Medicine power play. It's 0 for 1. They had one shot on their previous chance. Huge opportunity here to get some life to get back in this game. Here's Latang to Malkin. He scores! And they start on the comeback trail. Well, a big face off to the right of Bernier. Who wins the face off? It went the Leafs' way, but the Penguins, three on three in the corner, win that battle. And Chris Latang gets his second assist of the season as he sets up Malkin with a little bit of a fake. Malkin with a rip shot, and he went against the grain off the goal post. Bernier was in tremendous position, but that shot was just too good. And the Penguins do capitalize on the power play. Malkin with a puck in his own zone now, and the Penguins start back up, and they can make it 4-3 just like that. And then you've got a completely different scenario here. Not even halfway through this hockey game. Here's Malkin with it, looks for Neal in front. On the Leafs go the other way. Puck is done through the corner. Back to get it goes to Prey against Kadri. Kadri sent it back in behind the net. Now it's Clarkson for Toronto for Kadri in the corner. And each moves it out to Morgan Riley, skating beautifully. Riley trying to risk it to the net. Flagged down by Clarkson, who turns. Clarkson looks to the point. Ranger, all he could do to just keep it in, and he got it to the corner. And now behind the net of Genny Malkin, once again, cleaning up his own zone. He's been so good at picking off pucks deep in his own end and starting the play from his own zone. Now to the left wing comes James Neal. Neal cuts into the middle, drops it off to Malkin. Malkin back for Neal. Neal whips it back towards the net. The bouncing puck, Malkin looking for it behind the goal. Smiths it on him. Sutter emerges with the puck. He's on the ice. To the bench goes Neal as Orpik works it to the right point. Niskanen fed it to a man right off the bench, and it was dumped to the near corner. Now Orpik sends it back down into the corner. It's Andrew Ebbett who jumped on. Orpik to the net, and a bouncing puck. Oh, wait, there's Ebbett. Now Sutter, he scores! And it's 4-3. to three. I gotta tell you, Evgeny Malkin is on a mission. Now Sutter gets the goal, but Malkin is he's gonna have to pay rent in front of Bernier. Look at him. He occupies that space. Puck comes back off a of leaf body. Somehow, some way gets across that goal line. But Malkin was in the blue paint, around the blue paint, knocking sticks out of Rangers' hands. I mean, he he was just alone in front, and that allowed the Penguins, Connor. And who gets the last stick on that one? I don't know. Sutter may have indeed escorted that puck over the line, but a lot of chop, and that was Abbott with the first chop off a couple of Leafs and maybe off Sutter's stick, but again, he Malkin in front of that net. That was great stuff after he just made it four to two. We're gonna take a look and make sure it wasn't a high stick. And when it got hit up high, it was the goaltender, Bernier, who hit it the puck goes up high into the air 
Ebbett shoots it. It goes up high. Does it touch a stick right there? Malkin stick. And hard to tell from that angle. Yes. And I would say yes, it did. Oh, really? I'd have to see the other angle. I, I didn't see the puck change direction at all there. Looks like he lifted it up into the air an inch or so. It was on its way up, but it went up a little further, it looked to me. Yeah. And I didn't see that exactly. I'll take another another look at a different angle. Boy, that is so hard to tell. Did it hit the goalie stick? Or? That's possible. I th got knob of the goalie stick, possibly. That's what I thought initially. That's Actually, it's hard to tell. Bernier did hit it on the way down with the blocker, at least. Now that one's tough to tell. <laughs> It's one thing if you hit it with a high stick off the goalie and in. It's another if the goalie actually then propels the puck back in with his blocker after you touch it with a high stick, which is what Bernier did. He knocked it down. He was the last guy to touch it on the way down before Sutter went jamming in there with his stick. Very interesting to see what this call is. I know you're saying that Chris Letang's asking the same thing. If, if it's 16 that scored the goal and nobody called the high stick on the ice, then how can this be under review? Because you can't, you, if they didn't catch the high stick pass, then they didn't catch the well, high stick pass. Well, it wasn't a pass because Bernier touched but, it in between. Yeah, I know, but it's still considered a pass if it goes off the goaltender. Yeah, but he moved it, Bob. He propelled it. It isn't like it hit him. He turned and actually tried to play it away from the net. I don't know if that means anything or not, but it's not the same as the puck just hitting him. A lot of stuff to consider there, isn't there? It's a long delay, so they're talking about all the various, various factors that we're discussing. I didn't see a, a high stick on the puck on the ice or any sort of whistle for that. No, there was no whistle for it. Chris Tang was asking the same questions we are right now. I don't know. I don't know if he got a an answer or not either. Number 71 for Pittsburgh. High stick the puck over the crossbar. Therefore, no goal. So they're they're deeming that Mall can high stick that puck over the crossbar and into the net. And that Sutter didn't touch it. Because they didn't call high sticking pass. He never did touch it. The overhead really shows that clear, more clearly than anything. But well, Sutter never touched it. But you can see very clearly that Bernier did. But you made the point, Bob. If it hits the goalie and goes in, it's, it doesn't make any difference. No. So it's they're it. saying there's the high stick by Malkin. Bernier's trying to make a save. And the puck goes over and Sutter doesn't touch it. It's a high stick. Uh, it's Malkin. They're, they're deeming him the goal scorer. And they're saying it was a high stick, his stick above the crossbar. That's what I read from the, from the replay and from the explanation from the official. And Sidney Crosby saying, hey, well, Sutter touched the puck. And they're saying, well, Toronto said he didn't. That's my assumption. All over to play the puck is uh, Gunnarsson. Crosby will take it. Crosby with the puck. He's it out to the point to Derek Angelin, and he'll send it back in around. Clearly, the Penguins are on a comeback mission right now. It's just been interrupted, not necessarily ended. Now, there's uh, Crosby with the puck in the corner. Knuff's on him. Out to the point now to Brooks Orpik. To the right side, Derek Angelin. He'll bank it off the boards. Crosby there behind the net. Centers him in front. And Crosby and Phaneuf get involved, and they're tangled up here behind the Mucks. The uh, Toronto goal, the puck goes the other way. And taking it now deep in his own zone is Brooks Orpik. Big long, long pass. Crosby had it and lost it. Vincent moves it along now to Cody Franzen. And again, Crosby all tangled up with Phaneuf. What a battle.
Well, you know it's coming, and you know the Penguins are coming. They had one call back here on a high stick by Malkin. It looked like it was four to three, but Gino's on the board in the power play. Crosby and Funa battling tooth and nail in this one. Well, there's Dion Phaneuf, the captain of the Leafs on the left. Crosby, the captain of the Penguins on the right. Good battle behind the net. Phaneuf knocks him down. Sidney Crosby getting the glove in the face of Phaneuf. And boy, you can go way back to 2004 in a Team Canada tryout camp. In the World Juniors. Phaneuf was going at it, and then uh, Crosby's line mate jumped in and started duking it with Phaneuf. But no for Toronto, Crosby for Pittsburgh. Hey, well, you don't want the flashback very far either to go to last Saturday night when P.K. Subban and Sidney Crosby were all tangled up for most of the night. Or to last to April or May or whenever it was when the Penguins played the uh, Boston Bruins. And uh, he got all tangled up with Zdeno Chara, the captain of the Boston Bruins. Now Malkin and Ranger are getting into it. Shot off a stick over to the near side. It's getting nasty down here, Staggy. Cody Franzen with a slap shot on Zatkoff in goal for the Penguins now, makes a save. Well, Malka was in, you know, in the crease. Battling with Ranger on the goal that was denied, and here he is again. Ranger out there with that assignment of Guinea Malkin, and Malkin just wants a stick back. It's embedded into the stomach of Ranger, and those two are battling right now. Penguins. Uh, they got to keep keep the pedal to the metal here right now and not let that non-goal uh, call go against them. Faceoff coming up to the left of Zatkoff. Kadri to take it. Yeah, against Sutter. And Dion Phaneuf with it now. And behind the net, Chris Letang takes it. Four on four hockey, and the Penguins looking to get the next one here to really make this... Uh, an interesting game for the rest of the way. Not that it isn't already. But having that goal taken away kind of uh, stalls the Penguin comeback a bit. And the Leafs uh, maybe a feeling that uh, things are going to go their way. Now on the near side, Connor works it into the middle of the ice. Latang steps to the puck. Latang in the Leafs on shoots it. And the save made by goaltender Jonathan Bernier. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in the game. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Chris Letang with a good head of steam there for the Pittsburgh Penguins on the four on four. The rushing defenseman can be very dangerous and Letang trying to get himself into a good scoring position. There's the backup, James Reimer for the Leafs tonight. Penguins have seen their backup. He's in the net right now as before he started. Zakhoff came in and boy, it didn't take long for Kessel to put one behind Zakhoff, but the Penguins battling back here. Scored 13 seconds in and then 42 seconds in. And the Penguins getting the goal at 827. Malkin, Latang, and Crosby on the score sheet. On a power play goal for the Penguins. And the Leafs on the attack again. And obviously, Zakhoff going to have to hold the court. Back in the old days, you remember they used to be able to warm up the goaltenders when they came in in that kind of situation. Let them feel a little bit of rubber. Zakhoff didn't get any of that. And Kessel was able to rip one by him. And you know the story why they uh, stopped doing that, right? Allowing the warm up. Uh, it was a Mike Keenan and just kept changing goaltenders, giving the guys a break. Al Arbor was the first guy to do it. Here's uh, Simon Dupre to, to switch goalies to basically it was like, like a timeout. He would do it to stop the momentum of the opposition. And then put his other goalie right back in again. Here's Jokin and back to the front of the net. It goes behind Chris Kunitz. Taken down by Matt Niskanen in front now for Crosby off a leg and it'll ricochet all the way back into the Penguin zone. Zatkoff with a quick up for Kunitz. Chips it inside of the line and Cody Franzen takes it there for Toronto. Now it's Dion Phaneuf. Long shot, glove down by Zatkoff and he'll just hand it off to Latang. He wasn't quite prepared for that but he still was able to make the play up the boards for Kunitz. And that'll do Dupuis who dumps it into the Toronto zone. Crosby in on the puck first. Crosby centers. Latang shoots it off the heel of a stick. And Kunitz over the play. Doesn't have a stick right now. Crosby whips it out to the point. 
Not a Latang and drive. Ooh, just drifted that one wide of the goal. Both teams at full strength right now as the puck comes through for Bozak. We'll go get it in the corner. He and Orpik converging on it. Up the near wall, one of the Penguins went down hard. The centering pass by Franzen. Now thrown to the side of the net and covered up by Zatkoff. That puck bouncing around in the offensive zone, and Jeff Zatkoff able to corral it. On this week's Inside Penguins Hockey, Dan Bilesma shows us how he prepares his team for their next opponent. Bo Bennett finds a unique way of handling a prank, and the guys make special deliveries to local families and much more. Inside Penguins Hockey is presented by Heritage Valley Health System tonight after postgame on Root Sports. Well, it's a battle for ice out here. And the Leafs are trying to hang on. That was their first good real any opportunity here in the last 10 minutes of the game. It's been all Pittsburgh here after Toronto went up 4-1. to one. Taken out by Clarkson. Sends it up the boards and over to play it. Number 44 is Morgan Riley. And the young defenseman moves it along to Dion Fudeuf. Andy Carlisle said today that players relish a challenge. When asked about Fudeuf against Crosby. And obviously he's relishing it a lot. Now Adams, over the left wing, Neal to Malkin, trying to go right back to Neal. Neal over skates. And Austin Connery up the right wing will dump the puck into the Penguin zone. And those two just love to share the puck, and maybe sometimes too much. One of them's got to eventually shoot it. And the penalty coming up here. One of the at least was knocked down in front of the Penguins bench. Might have been Holland interfering with the Penguins. I think it's going to be a Penguin power play. Oh, thank you. Well, Dan, it's 4-2 Toronto here. How do you let a goal that uh, a non-goal in, in your side of things not let you guys down, not deflate you? Well, we've uh, we've given them a couple here on the other end by some gifts wrapped up for them, and they've capitalized, and now we're down behind a hole. And you know, we got the goal, the power play goal. We've had a couple good shifts there. We, uh, and I don't know what the, the call was there or not, if we high stuck it or if that's he did get a piece of it but we got a no go we just got to keep going here with the rest of this period good character builder yeah thank you all right thanks man kevin pollock at the last uh, timeout was talking about getting malk and he said it was high he high stuck the puck and he said nobody else touched it is what i read from his lips so and that's what they called on the ice did they not they said malkin high stick that puck into the net so it ended up being as simple as that the call but they had to check and make sure a lot of different little different things there with Sutter in the mix. Crosby with it on a UPMC Sports Medicine power play. Works it out to Chris Letang. The Penguins are one for two with a man advantage. A power play goal, the one that made it four to two. Now they look to get one more goal closer. Out to the point it comes to Letang. Letang with a fire. And he scores! It's deflected in, I think. The Penguins do make it four to three. And may hit a leaf up high. Went in behind. The goaltender, Bernier, and the Penguins power play, creating more momentum. There's a shot, may have hit Fanouf before it got to Kunitz, settles it down, Latang head up, the shot. A lot of traffic in front provided by Kunitz. And I could can't tell you definitively whether Kunitz touched it or not. It looked like it hit a leaf definitely up higher. And the Penguins get that one back. It's four to three with a couple of power play goals. And the Penguins continue to attack. And a shot just wide of the net on the stick side of Bernier. Orpik works it back for Sutter, but it'll go to center ice. Look out here. Engelin trying to get position on Van Riemsdyk. He couldn't get the pass through to Bozak. Good work by Engelin there. And now Sutter with it deep in his own zone. 4.18 to go, second period. And the Penguins are back to within one, and look out. It's Clarkson with it, shoots it. And it's off the no, Zach off to the far goal. side. And now for Dupuis. Kunitz does get credit for the goal. Not appear as though he touched it. It did skip right by him and into the net. And it appeared to hit something up a little bit higher. And over to play it now is Clarkson. Clarkson sends it behind the net. Works it out to the point now to Cody Franzen. Across ice. And Knuth comes it in deep. And it comes around now for Adams. Out for Dupuis. He's got to reach for the puck. Dupuis looks ahead. 
And Sutter will dump it to the corner. Taken now by Cody Franzen. The pass directed in by Smithson. Dupre back to play it. Simone Dupre, hard pass ahead for Connor. Get it stripped away momentarily. Niskanen able to clear it right back to center. And taken now by Niskanen and over Simone Dupre. Use it out on the wing. Neff has directed it in uh, deep. And then the Penguins go to work on the forecheck. Joe Vitale sends it back into the corner for Connor. It's Connor, Ebbett, and Vitale on the ice. A lot of speed for the Penguins. And Grit, Ebbett, nice play to Niskanen to the net. It's off a leg and over to the near side. 2.50 uh, to go here in the period. And the Penguins with a lot of momentum right now. And you can feel it just the way they're working. And the crowd into it as well. Out to the point it comes to Dupre. A shot. Blocker save made by Bernier. Boy, what a four check by this unit of three plus two. Tally over, just taking the body. Another hit by Evan. Finally, the Leafs are able to get the center. It's a three on two. The Penguins shuffle the deck. They get players on. The Leafs were so tired after You're that right. long shift that they had to go to the bench, too. They, they actually dumped it in and <laughs> went off in unison. On a three on two. Like that. <laughs> Here's Malkin with it now. A Kessel pressuring in. Niskanen banks it ahead. Neal fires it a save. Neal again. Shot it was deflected away by Morgan Riley. Malkin works it to the point. Latang can't keep it in. Look out. Bozak trying to get there. Following on. And Reeves by Kessel. And the pass off his stick. Thank goodness for the Penguins there. The Kessel couldn't take that pass cleanly. And the Penguins go the other way, and it's a three on two for them. This looks a lot like that Islander game last Friday night right now. Yeah, it's, and that's okay when you were down four to one. Now four to three. The Penguins. There's Malkin shooting. Out to Neal. Save, and the rebound cleared away at the last second. Boy, Neal got rid of that puck in a hurry. Bernie made a big save there with his right pad on James Neal. Now the Islanders and the Leafs. Such great skating teams. Look out. Shot by Kessel. Zatkoff fights it off and then covers it up. Let's take one more look at the last Penguin goal from a different angle. And Chris Letang firing that puck. Goes off a leaf right there. Goes down and through, right through the legs of Kunitz. So you see how important that traffic is in front of the net. Hit the leaf. You can see there, hit the leaf up high. Went right through the legs. And they changed that goal. It's been credited to Kunitz right now. But they have to have all those elements. Shot on the net. Traffic there. Clarkson with the puck now for Toronto. Works it back on the corner for Mason Raymond. Crosby. Look to find Derek Engelin out to Dupuy. Hard pass to Kunitz. Crosby busting in. Kunitz fans on the shot. Gets it back. Try to get it to the net. Mason Raymond there. Kunitz jumps on him. Dupuy with a blast. Save made by Bernier. Now Kunitz has it again. Oh, he tried to go to Dupuy. And the puck picked off nicely by Carl Gunnarsson. And the Leafs just push it back to center ice. Taken now by Brooks Orbit. Over to Matt Niskanen. And Derek Engelin. For the Penguins, ahead for Crosby, and stand up on him. Anglin collides in center right with Padre, and falling on Mason Raymond, but offside called. Uh, Toronto is the end of the Penguins zone with 28.1 seconds remaining in the period. Our Nissan Road ahead will take the Penguins to Tampa Bay. They'll travel there tomorrow, Thanksgiving Day, play on Friday at 4 o'clock, and then at Florida Saturday night. Their next game after that will be on Long Island on Tuesday. And then home to meet the Sharks. We've seen uh, different line mates for Malkin and Neal the last couple of shifts. This time it's Connor on the left side. And I'm not so sure. Uh, Jokinen is on the bench. And... But Connor's so good in this hockey game. He jumps to the bench and now Malkin, Crosby and Neal will be the line up front in the final 19 seconds. Bozak against Sid, won the draw. The puck out to center and Matt Neskidit. One more rush maybe for the Penguins here, but they turn it over to Van Riemsdyk and he comes ahead with Kessel. Look out, Van Riemsdyk shoots it, save it, rebound, score. 
Bozak went to the net and poked it in behind Zatkoff. And that is a tough one for the Penguins to take because they tried to get to center ice in a hurry to maybe get one more rush going, turned it over, can't and it ends it up in their net. You just can't turn it over in that situation. You're right back in the hockey game, 4-3. The Penguins try to go up the wall. Van Riemsdyk reads that. And the Leafs go the other way. They do get the third man into the play, but you see the stick right at the end. As Van Riemsdyk shoots it to that pad, it gets kind of stuck under the pad of Zakoff and lays right there. And then it's just uh, jabbed over that goal line. So just what a, a terrible, terrible goal to give up in the final second for the second period after you worked so hard, so diligently to get back into the game on a couple of power play goals and some great efforts. And let's see if the Penguins can regroup and muster something up in the third. Let's go to Robin Jay. 5-3 Toronto after two. If you're just joining us, here's what you missed. Presented by your Western PA Honda dealers. Shoots the puck on a sharp angle and Bernier to save that. But centers now. Hunter, he scores! Plus 14. Up the least score here. Right off the hop. Angle in the lone man back. It's Bozak with a question. Goes to the net. Bozak shoots. And it goes off the goal post. And it. Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah, two great ones. Look out. They score right off the hop here again. The tank. Stolen away by Bozak. Man, wide open. They score again. Kessel pounces on the puck. Huge opportunity here to get some light to get back in this game. Here's Latang to Morgan. He scores! Bouncing puck. Oh, wait, there's Evan. Now Sutter. He scores! Airport, no goal. Latang with a fire. And he scores! It's deflected in, I think. And Reeves like, shoots it. Save that rebound. Score! Wow. A lot of pucks going in, Bobby. Yeah, that was one of those uh, periods that the Penguins would have felt comfortable getting out of it four to three after they had fought valiantly back after one goal that was disallowed on a Malkin high stick. But to give up that one in the final seconds, that's got to be a tough pill to swallow, and we'll see if the troops can regain their form and come back here strong in the third period of play. Sidney Crosby against Tyler Bozak to start the third period. Now, if you remember, in that game against the Islanders uh, last Friday night, it was a little crazy, but both teams were able to kind of shut it down in the third. Now, Gunnarsson sweeps at it. Dupuis back to the net, just uh, out of the reach of the goaltender, but he you know, actually did grab that with his glove. Well, Chris Kunitz came off the ice here, guys. He got whacked in the left hand, and he's not feeling very good. And this is the two goals that were just allowed. Malkin, a high stick. And then the goal at the end of the period. I really turned. I want, I want to ask you about that goal, Bob. I want to ask you because Orpik went up the wall with it. Here's Orpik with the puck now off the faceoff. He shoots it wide of the goal. You, know, you definitely don't want to throw it into the middle. What what should he have done there? He got elevated off the board. He can't be, you know, Van Riemsdyk just taking away that lane. It wasn't there. He can hold the puck. He can bring it back. There's only, four, there's only 10 seconds left in the period at that point. Do you think he thought he was making the safe play by going up the wall with it? Toronto's fifth goal. I definitely think he was. But Van Riemsdijk, six foot three at least, long rangey guy, left-handed shot, and he was able to easily read that play as the Penguins are trying to do that. He'd like to, in a situation like that, try to get it off the wall a little bit higher. Gotcha. Sometimes it's easier to stay if the glass is on your side, and, and Orpik didn't have that luxury of having the glass. It's all boards over here in the bench. If he was on the glass side, I guarantee you that puck would have just been a soft little pass off the glass. There's no way Van Riemsdyk would have been able to touch it. And he was playing the right side, Bob, at that moment. He's a left defenseman yep. by trade, is he not? Yes, he definitely is. He never... He's just trying to force it. Sometimes, you know, just take the 4-3 to three in the next period. Live the fight another day. Here's Niskanen shooting, and the stick save made by Bernier. And here go the Leafs again, that quick transition. Kadri down the right wing. He's with Clarkson and Mason Raymond. Clarkson goes in, overskates the puck. Dupre sends it up the wall out of the reach of Jokinen, held in by Morgan Riley. Jokinen back over to try to play it. Jokinen's inability to play that puck on the outlet by Dupre is giving the Leafs an opportunity here to keep the puck in the offensive zone. Now Dupre. Does get it to Jokinen, who does move it along to Malkin. Jokinen goes to the bench. Malkin to Neal. Crisscross. 
Neal in the slot trying to get it to the goal. Bernier will reach out and cover it up for a faceoff. Take a look what happened to Chris Kunitz on that first shift. He came off, got his hand uh, or arm whacked, I think, by Dion Phaneuf. Right there, just above the glove. He's, he's about a 14 inch glove to match his number, and there's the space right where the elbow pad goes down before the glove starts. And when you're moving your hand around, obviously you're going to have a gap there. And that's where Dion Phaneuf was able to, to find all bone, I think. He's got a mean streak in him, Dion Phaneuf. I remember meeting him at the draft when he was drafted in 03 and the Penguins selected Mark Andre Fleury. I, members of the media could sit at tables with various guys who were going to be drafted. And, and I, he reminded me of Jack Lambert when I met him. Just he had that demeanor. Like I knew he was, you could just tell he was a mean guy. Or he had a meanness in him. And it comes through <laughs> times during the games, for sure. Well, uh, here's Cody Franzen with it. He drops it off and Jay McClement dumps it up the right wing boards up into the Penguins zone and back to get it. Chris Letang leaning on him is Jared Smithson. And you get a penalty here. Yeah, this one's against Toronto as well. Smithson going to go off taking a penalty against Chris Letang in the Penguins defensive zone. So the Penguins have already have a couple of power play goals in the game. There's the hold. There's our Super Bowl. Presented by Allegheny Health Network shows that Smithson has Latang wrapped up right there. Kunitz is back on the ice. And the Penguins are back on the power play, a UPMC Sports Medicine power play. And off the draw, it is Gunnarsson now for Fanuf. Gunnarsson trying to get control of the puck here deep in his own zone on the penalty kill. The Penguins keep it alive, and it's Malkin to Latang. Latang back out for Gino. Oh. Man, they just can't seem to make it click back there. The Malkin and and, and, G, and uh, Latang. Paul oh, Martin was playing on that number one unit. There's a chance for Neal and a save made by Bernier in the short side and Crosby got to the rebound. Out to the point, Malkin. Now Latang plays the right side. Cross ice for Sid. Crosby, Neal and Kunitz up front. Neal with it all over him is Jay McClendon, one of the best penalty killers in the game. He never leaves the ice. He's leading the league in shorthanded time on the ice. Finally, he doesn't go to the bench here. And he averages a, a bit over four minutes a game shorthanded. Kessel went to the Leafs locker room after running into Malkin in the first shift of this period. Hmm. Now Latang under pressure from Van Riemsdyk. That's he takes a penalty. Give him the puck. There you go. Carlisle can't believe it. Well, Van Riemsdyk is giving the official an earful right now. He doesn't like it. It looks just like the other one. What he's saying is that Latang tucked his arm in there to hold that stick. Well, but he's got the left arm around Latang as well. Here's Malkin and Kessel colliding in the opening shift. Oh boy, Kessel took a shoulder right up high on the chin. Yes, sir. Malkin shoulder right into the chin of Kessel and he's in the locker room. Now think about that penalty that was just called on Van Riemsdyk. If they don't call it and he takes the puck away from Latang, he's basically got a breakaway. That's why they called it. So yeah, exactly. It would be a scoring chance if you don't call it. Yeah. You gotta call that. Yeah. Maybe in the offense, uh, maybe in the another part of the ice, and maybe you get away with it. Not there. Five on three for the Penguins. They get right back in the game. Here's Neal shooting and a stick save made by Bernier and he deflects it up into the netting in the far corner. That pass was about three inches too far forward and Neal just not able to shoot that puck with the velocity that he wanted to. Just a slightly forward. See how he had to, it was off his front foot and you want it right in between your feet. Face off again to the left of Bernier. The Penguins control it. Crosby right to Kunitz. And then we have a broken stick on the ice. Balkan's got it. So now it's five on three, and one of the guys has no stick. Expose that. Quick shot. That's the net. The Tang with a great chance there. One time to wide of the goal. Corner boards taken by Neal. Back out to Latang. Over to Malkin and right back to Latang. No, he's going to hang on to it. Bozak all over him. Neal scores! Wow. That pass was that pass was in a pretty good spot, wasn't it? Take a look at the broken stick, Bozak, right off the faceoff. 
He's got no choice but to drop it. He could go to the bench for another stick. He decides to stay on the ice. The Penguins use him as a turnstile. And there is James Neal going high over that shoulder. What a feed by Malkin. That pass was perfect. Neal able to get all of it. Rifles it up into the upper corner over the left shoulder. Bernier, that power play is still on the ice and on fire. Points in five straight for Neal. Six goals during that five game stretch. And he wants another one here. Here's Neal to the goal. Doesn't pull the trigger, but gets after the puck in the corner. Works it back out to Latang. He's still got a minute 11 to go on the Van Riemsdyk penalty. Plenty of time on a UPNC Sports Medicine power play. Crosby to Malkin. Holds it. Malkin stick handles around McClement. Got to work it in front. Gets it back. It's up for grabs here, and over to help out is Neal. He got it to Latang. Kunis goes to the net. The shot. Kunis right there. No rebound. For him, anyway, and it's cleared away by Frazier all the way down the ice. 48 seconds to go on the penalty. Neal off. Kunitz off. Yoking it on the ice for Pittsburgh. Latang carries now. Drops it off. It's not there for Crosby. He's got to go back. Latang in center ice. Knocked away by Bozak. And a lead pass for Mason Raymond. Coming back is Niskanen. Knocks it down. No penalty. And the Penguins go the other way. The Leafs are changing. It's three on three. Malkin with a blast and Bernier over to make the save on Evgeny Malkin. Back up the wall it comes and Malkin trying to get it to the point. Penalty here I believe on Malkin as he gets his stick up high on Mason Raymond who is checking the left side of his cheek right now and Malkin goes to the box after Raymond had an unbelievable opportunity. Niskan able to get back. The Penguins couldn't get the puck through the neutral zone. Take a look at Malkin getting his stick up here. Yeah, two hands on the stick right into the face. Here's Nissingen getting back. Stick on puck. Raymond just trying to buy a penalty after that. Beautiful play by Nissingen and after Latang tried a couple of passes in the neutral zone and neither one connected. Malkin goes to the box, four on four for nine Pittsburgh. seconds, and then the Leafs will have a power play. Fanuk, Kessel's back out here, Bob. Yes, he is. And taken now by Adams into the middle now. Herpik was under siege, and a high shot by Sutter. Look Off out, the glass. JVR came out of the box. He's standing behind the Penguins, and all the Penguins got up on the bench. Six, seven, eight of them started pounding on the boards. Kessel down the wing. Kessel against the prey. Takes the shot. Works it out to the point two. Fanuf, power play for the Leafs. Trying to get that two goal lead back again. Fanuf with it now to Kessel. Kessel shoots it. And it's deflected wide of the goal. Cody Franzen in deep on the play. Capre on this penalty killing effort for the Penguins. And it comes around for Adams who finds that opening and shoots it all the way down the ice. And we'll take a look at the Penguins penalty killing unit here. Who do they got out now? They've got Ole Mata with Chris Letang, Jason Megna, and Pascal Dupuy. Magna, a pretty good penalty killer in Wilkes-Barre. Had a couple of shorthanded goals down there. I don't know if Kessler's all right. He just mishandled the puck again and went right to the bench. At the near wall is Morgan Riley down the boards. Magna did a good job of preventing from getting the puck deep, and now it's Van Riemsdyk. Cross ice, Morgan Riley centers it. Latang got in front of that. Now he chips it up the boards and a race for the puck over to get it as Gunnarsson. It's Mata and Latang, Dupuy and Magna still for the Penguins as the Leafs come ahead. Kadri shoots it. Oh, it came up and caught Latang up here in the face. He at least reacted as if it did, but he's okay now. Morgan Riley moves it to the right side. Kadri with it. Clarkson's in front of the net. Centering pass for Clarkson. Right on him was Magna. Comes through Gunnarsson, shoots it. Blocked by Latang, and it comes all the way back to center. Nine seconds to go on the penalty to Malkin. Penguins change penalty killer. Clarkson into the Penguin zone. He's got Mason Raymond. He shoots it, and it hit Derek Engel. Raymond goes behind the net, able to get to the puck and work it up the boards. Malkin back on the ice. Penguins at full strength. And it's Crosby, Malkin, and Kunitz right now for the Penguins up front. And they're deep in their own zone, trying to get it out. It comes up the wall now for Gunnarsson. Wrists it wide of the net off the boards. Clarkson racing over, has it perfect. Perfect, wanted to get there first. Clarkson lost his stick, looking around for it, and the Leafs Watch the Penguins start out of their own zone. Lead pass to Kunitz. Kunitz to Crosby. Right to the goal. Bernier to say they score. Malkin, last man to touch it. The Penguins tie the game at five. Wow, 
Chris Kunitz, who do I go to? Crosby or Malkin? Well, I'm distraught there, and somebody will bang it in. Malkin comes out of the penalty box, stays on the ice. Crosby skate to stick to the pads of Bernier. And look at Malkin. He pushed Bernier back first, and then he <laughs> put the puck behind him. That was incredible. Stop the Super Bowl presented by Allegheny Health Network. Malkin pushes him back, pushes the puck in the net. Wow, what a push for the Penguins. 5-5. Five, five. Crosby and Malkin going to the cage. And Kunitz throwing it there. And we're right where we started. Evgeny Malkin scoring his fifth goal, sixth goal of the season. Second power, second uh, goal of the game. Now it's McClemmon with it coming to center. They'll backhand it up into the Penguins zone. So the Penguins kill the penalty. Malkin comes on the ice. Scores a goal out there with Sidney Crosby. So the game tied at five and on this kid. It sends it up the wall. Connor ahead now. Oh, James Neal was behind the defense. Couldn't get him the puck. And now the key is now the Penguins will probably need to calm down a bit after tying it, believe it or not. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. How about that one? The whole crowd, the 300 straight sellout. Couldn't believe what Debris, Debris just pulled off. Sutter with it now. Sends it to the corner to Adams. Adams. Ebbett. Sutter. Back in. Poked away. Orpik ahead to Ebbett. Leafs had a 4-1 lead in this game. Penguins made it 4-2. Time to go. Okay. They've scored two goals here from uh, Neal and Malkin. Malkin assisting on the Neal goal, as well as Latang on the power play, and then Malkin scoring from Crosby and Kunitz. Kunitz with a backhander and a save by Bergen. Crosby there for the rebound, pushed it to the net. And back around now for Dupuy to Crosby and out to Latang. A shot reflected away from the net by Dupuy. Fedup sent it up the boards. Clarkson wanted to just redirect it back to center, but Kunitz hustling over, kept it in. Back around near side for Latang. Shoots the puck and it's off a stick. Over to the corner where Kunitz will take it for Crosby. Crosby walks out. Leaves it there for Kunitz to do free and he whacked at it but didn't get any puck. And Bernier able to freeze it. The 300th consecutive sellout crowd is loving it. Neal and Malkin catching in to tie this game at five. Well, Genny Balkan on Saturday, coast to coast, setting up Neal for his second goal, hard into the boards on Monday. Genny Malkin went the distance again, covering all areas of the ice. And tonight, taking advantage of a broken stick by Tyler Bozak to set up Neal for that rocket shot. There, pushing Vernier back into the net. Vernier looking back to the official saying, please help me out, how does this count? Well, it did. They already took one away from Malkin. They can't take another one. <laughs> now a play over there. Well, the Penguins had gone through that stretch where they were having a tough time scoring goals, you remember, a couple of weeks ago. But the Leafs have been a nice uh, remedy for that here tonight. Not before they got out to a 4-1 to lead in the hockey game. Penguins scored the first goal in this game way back when when Chris Connor scored at 157 that should have been the first indication to us that it was going to be one of those nights where the nets were filled Van Riemsdyk dumps it in now we still have 10 minutes to go in the period and the game is brand new a 5-5 hockey game Zadkoff is the goaltender of record and look out shot Taken now by Neal, he'll step out three on two with Van Reems like getting back to make it a three on three. Backhand pass across. And Bernier gloves it with Penguins going to the net. And he'll be a face off in the Toronto zone. He just changed uh, the Kunis goal to Latang. One that we showed you earlier. Yep. Five to five after the Leafs gave up six in their last outing. Six nothing. Somebody's going to get to six tonight. Cool. 
Kuhlman has the puck now for Toronto. Dupre goes back for the puck in his own zone. Turns away from Kuhlman, hands it off to Niskanen and up the wall. Connor able to direct it out to center. Andrew Ebbett over to try to play it. Now Sutter drags it through. Sutter to the puck in the corner with Morgan Riley bearing down on him. He turns his back on him. Great work by Sutter along the wall. Now taken by Connor and he tried to get it to the net. And skated right out of there quickly by Ranger. Well, Ranger dumps the puck into the Penguin zone and Zapkoff over for Dupre. Back around to the far side, Niskanen up the boards. Connor can't get there first. Clarkson does for Toronto, dumping it behind the net. Mason Raymond trying to get around Dupre, who protects the puck. Simon Dupre with two Leafs on him. With some help. Boy, look at that play by Evan. That play was in the air there. Evan knocked it out of the air to get it out of his own zone after Sutter. And Sutter has really picked up his foot speed in this game. I think it's contagious what Connor and Evan are bringing. Codry with it now. He'll shoot it wide of the goal. Clarkson to the puck. Clarkson to the point now to Fanuk. Bozak jumps on the ice for Toronto. Around to the near side. Latang skating beautifully. Look out. Oh, he was tripped up there by Bozak. Here comes Crosby. In front. Bernier makes the save on Chris Kunitz. And I thought it might slip underneath him, but Sid tried to set up Kunitz. In the meantime, Latang is fortunate to have not been injured there as he was tripped up. Like a, looked like a leg-on-leg -leg situation. Boy, great speed again for the Penguins. Getting in on Bernier. Time now for the Subway sandwich of the game. And it's Simone Dupre. This is a big one in the first period on Riley. I'll give him credit for that one. Well, a lot of injuries, but uh, some of the replacements in this hockey game have acquitted themselves very well. Orpik with a puck, moves it out to the right point. Taken now by Derek Engel, it banks it off the boards. Bernier sweeps it down to the corner, where it's taken by Chris Kunitz. Back up top to Engel and across now for Orpik. Orpik with a wrist shot. Where's that puck? Oh my God. See how Bernier reacted to that? It was up high, it went down very quickly. He almost <laughs> looked like it hit the side of the net, and the referee waved it off. That was so weird. He stood straight up. And now it comes to Derek Vinton. Crazy night here. Thanksgiving Eve in the bird. Now Neal back to the net, and that was wide of the goal. Taken by Gunnarsson right away. Crosby in there, prize it free. And Dupuy with a backhand try, and the save made by Bernier. And now Fanuf gets uh, involved down there in the corner with James Neal, playing with Sid and Dupuy on that particular sequence. Yeah, Fanuf touched over right now. They're tiring him. Take a look at the chance. That was the one right in front. Take a look at the tip. Brooks Orpik, watch Crosby stick. Crosby stick. Down low, is it above the crossbar? I don't know, we would have had to go to Toronto again. I don't think so, and, and then the reaction by Bernier from the other angle, you can see him stand straight up. And now the puck won by the Leafs on this face-off, and with 7.30 to go in the third period of the game tied at five. The lead pass out of the reach of Kuhlman, and a hybrid icing call. They'll bring it back into the Toronto zone. Well, Malkin has two goals and an assist, three points. Neal, one, one, and two. One goal, one assist for two. Latang, a goal and two assists. Sid and Kunitz each have a pair of helpers. They feel this um, this faceoff is so important. Vitali is on the ice right now. He took Jokin and off. Let's see what we got. Really surprised that Malkin wouldn't be taking that faceoff to Neil in that situation. That's their uh, bread and butter circle. Smithson back to the net off the goal. It wasn't uh, on the on the net, if you will, and it was gloved on the side by Zatkoff, and he'll hold on onto it for a face-off in the Penguin zone. Well, we've seen two or three goals off face-offs already here tonight. And in a 5-5 game, 5-5 game, you cannot take any chances. The Penguins want to make sure that they have a good solid centerman on for especially uh, any of these defenses on face-offs. Sutter against Kadri. Connor to the corner. Fanuf sent it around near side of Tang. Up the boards now. Ebbett able to work it to Sutter who dumps it in. Bernier. 
Play to the head and the leash on the attack. Mason Raymond for Clarkson. Taken away by the Tang. Up the left wing, it's Connor. Sutter headed to the net. Connor closes in, shoots off the side of the goal. Sutter looking for it now behind the net. Well, Connor had Sutter going to the goal there and trying yep. to score on the play. It might have been either better off probably trying to shoot for a pad to create a rebound. Fraser went down. That posed a lot of problems and decisions for Connor. He went down trying to take away that pass, and, and Connor held on to the puck, was looking for something, but Fraser took away probably 12 feet of ice. Walker to the front of the net, a shot, it's stopped by Bernier, rebound! Bernier makes another save, well, Neal right on the doorstep. Now Angela dumps it into the corner, Malkin is there. Back behind the net for Neal, in front, he'll get it, and he shot it. And off the stick or the blocker of Bernier up into the netting behind the Toronto goal. Another good shift here, the Penguins aren't satisfied. They want to get the next one and take the lead in this game for the oh, boy. Paul second Ranger. time. Yeah, Paul Ranger's got his hands full with Malkin, and he's all over the he's ice. This line is just feeling it right now. There's a little area pass by Jokinen. Malkin able to get in there. There's a big left pad save by Bernier. He's done his best just to keep it at 5-5 here. Penguins up to 43 shots right now. He's made 38 saves. They're heading to 50 again. They just had, gave up 50 to the Capitals two games ago. Oh, time, time. Kessel with the puck now. Into the middle for Bozak. He'll dump it to the right wing corner. Orpik goes back for it. Good work by Kessel behind the net. Centers Van Riemsdyk just tipped it towards the goal. Englund had it and lost it. Now Bozak with it back out to the point. Gunnarsson can't keep it in. Sidney Crosby getting after it. It's going to go all the way up into the leaf zone where Bernier waits for it to come to the trap. Look, Crosby stopped. Try to throw it in front of him. Off Bernier, the goaltender with Dupuis standing in front of an empty net. Crosby knocked that puck down. It was three feet in the air and just knocked it down like... As Artie would, Kevin Stevens would say, knocked it down like duck soup, Staggy. <laughs> he absolutely just knocked it down out of the air like he would have done it a hundred times. Like catching a fly with chopsticks. <laughs> Here's Malkin with it now, ahead out of the reach of Jokinen. And Cody Franzen has it. 5 6 to go in this crazy third period. Neal with it. Left it for Malkin. Gino. Shoots it off a leg. It hit the leg of the man who has the puck right now, Mark Frazier of the Leafs. Lumbers his way back out the center and looks to the right wing. Out of the reach of Kuhlman this time. And Dupre goes back, and it's an icing call against Toronto. By the way, Simone Dupre has not been on the ice for any of the Leafs' goals tonight. Just as we promised earlier in the game, it's Miller time, brought to you by Miller Lite. Boy, there they are. And this one going to the net. And I'm just wondering if the Leafs are going to call timeout. And they're not. Malkin with three points. And you mentioned Dupre not on the ice for any goals against. Any of the Leaf goals against was in the penalty box early in the game for one of the Leaf goals. That's true. Here's Evan with it now. He uh, shoots it off a stick to the near side. But he's played strong, Peggy. Uh, yeah, Dupre has had a really good game back there in a game where there's been some big mistakes by Penguins. Oh, the praise played solid. Not an easy game to play in, I would imagine. <laughs> no. For a defenseman. <laughs> and I can't tell you who was, whose responsibility it was to be on the ice when they only had four on the ice for one of the lead goals. Well, it was Derek Anglin, and he at that point had been playing with Olimata, so maybe Olimata did not recognize that he needed to be on. Hard to say. Here's Sutter in front, shoots, and a save by Bernier. He tried to get a rebound there. There wasn't any rebound. Bernier able to freeze the puck. But they keep coming. 45 shots now. And it's the line of Ebbett, Connor, and Sutter again. Shots are 16 to nothing for the Pittsburgh Penguins in this third period of play. 5-5. Five, five. These games seem to bring out the best and the worst in Pittsburgh. Up and down hockey. You see the skill when you have open ice and opportunity. And we've seen some glaring mistakes by the Penguins in this hockey game. but. Could never question their character when they were down four to one you had the feeling that some way i did anyway that there was a possibility they would come back there was so much time on the clock and they've done that and they've done that with everybody with four lines certainly their stars having a big role in this hockey game partner but uh boy you cannot discount what that line of sutter evan and connor brought to this game you must feel like you've been in the time machine tonight bob back to the 80s <laughs> 
Yeah, it's been fun. These, these games are fun, 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 yeah. Now my old buddy Ray Ferraro, I don't know if he's my buddy, but uh, he's one of the good guys. Does, does a great job for the Canadian Network. Yep, he's right next to him in the uh, box there between the benches. And now Crosby back to the net, it's blocked. It comes out to the point, Brooks Orpik sends it back into the corner for Sid. And now Kunis tries to get to the puck. And he put up on his knees, shuffles that puck back out to center. So the Leafs are just hanging on for dear life here. Outshot 16 to nothing in the third period in which the Penguins have scored a couple of goals to get back to a 5-5 game here. And three and a half minutes remaining in the third period. Dupuy with it now. He comes ahead for Crosby. Try to get it through for Dupuy. Crosby's tired. He's going to head back to the bench. Malkin comes on along with UC Yoken. Dupuy still out here. And Reimsdijk sends it hard around all the way out to center. The Leafs are making some changes now. Bernier handles it behind the net. Taken away by Jokic and he centers. Poked to the far side by Smithson and picked up now by Jay McClemmon. He'll carry into the Penguin zone. Jay McClemmon against Dupre. Got it behind Dupre and then Niskanen one-handed it to the corner. Malkin on the puck finds Jokic. Jokic comes back for the Penguins to center with Malkin on his left. Here's Malkin. Back for Jokic. Try to go to the net with it. And it comes to the corner. Willeman sent it up the boards and McClement with it. Jay McClement gains the red line, slips it inside the Penguin zone. 2.34 to go in regulation time. Simon McRae under some pressure here from Cadre. Look how calm he is, though. He brought the puck back and gave it to Niskan. Instead of turning the puck over in the neutral zone, he was able to spin around, use his defensive partner. Now you get an offensive zone faceoff. Good stuff. Huh? There's our McDonald's player of the game, Evgeny Malkin. Yeah, he's, he's the big M right now, isn't he? He's got three points. Crosby with two. So Malkin now has 30 points on the year. Crosby with 33. Well, that puts them 1-2 in the scoring race, if I'm not mistaken. So I guess that's where they belong, Bob, Sid and Gino. Two at 19 to go. As the puck is sent back into the Penguin zone, Latang turns and Sutter has to go back into his own zone to play it. Our fans certainly getting their money's worth here tonight. In this 300 straight sellout in Pittsburgh. Very entertaining for the fans. Very nerve wracking for the coaches and the goaltenders. Now the goaltender of record is Jeff Zakoff, not Mark Andre Fleury. Connor with it. Only Mata banks it off the boards. And they're going to give this uh, oh. icing call. <laughs> I know it's going to be icing against the Penguins. <laughs> I know. You can hear a bit this collective sigh of uh, release here, and watch how uh, slowly Ranger, or who was it that went back for this? Both the uh, Leafs defense and oh, I just couldn't get to that. Morgan Riley. Yep. Time out. Dan Balsma here. Got to get everybody on the same page. Boy, these games have been fought right to the bitter end. And you know the Penguins they had to fight in Boston to the final second, point three of a second to get a point there. You know, while Dan Bilesma confers with everybody, we'll show you the. Uh, the goals from Neal and Malkin here in the third period. One at 346, the next one at 741. Yeah, the Penguins down five to three after giving up that late goal at the end of the second period. Malkin taking advantage of that broken stick by Bozak, finds Neal. And then he goes hard to the net with Crosby, pushes Bernier into the cage, and the puck as well. To knot it up at five. And Gino and Neal, since November 9th, well, the top combo in the NHL in the last nine games with a total of 25 points for, between them. And you can add three more for Malkin and two more for Neal. So that's uh, 30 points in 10 games for that combination, Bob. You look you're down to the end of the bench. Crosby, Kunitz, Dupuy, the next line up. They got to move down towards the defenseman. They got to go all the way down to try to get to the defensive zone. And off the faceoff, good work by Connor to bust through there and get to the puck. And then slip it softly up into the leaf zone. So a kind of a team face-off win there, Bob. Yep, and they get the change. And Crosby is on with Dupuis, who lifts it to the line. 
Sidney Crosby, Pascal Dupuis, Chris Kunitz, Brooks Orpik, and Derek Engelin on the ice right now for Pittsburgh. Engelin sent it ahead. It's going to be off of uh, Gunnarsson. Back back for it now is Fanuf. And Fanuf sent it hard around to the center ice where it's taken in the neutral zone by Tyler Bozak. He dumps it in, in after the Zorfik. Bozak bumped him, but Engelin came over to take the puck. Out for Kunitz. A minute remaining in a 5-5 game. Here's Van Riemsdyk with it. Orpik tried to step up on him. Now Smithson drops it off to Cody Franzen. Penguins make some changes over there on the far side as Kessel holds the puck at center and dumps it into the Penguin zone. Off the glass, it'll be handled by Zapkoff. And up the boards it goes to Gino. Neal. And Jokinen. Now the wall falls down. Neal with the puck looks for Malka. Throws it in front off of the skate of Frazier. Cody Franzen taps it ahead where it's carried back to center. Good skating here by Kuhlman. Back to Franzen. He shoots it. And it goes behind the net. Now up the wall. Here's Evgeny Malka. 20 seconds to go in regulation. There's a man open in the middle. It's Jokin and Malkin can't get on the puck. It's Pernuk. Rubbed him out on the near boards. He yells at the referee on that. Well, it was interference, but uh, at this time of the game, the referee wasn't going to call it in the last 10, 15 seconds. Five seconds to go in regulation. Each team will get a point. And I guess that's justice in a way. And now we'll see who gets the extra point in a moment. Maybe they both do deserve a point. So Sackoff. Bernier, Bernier, he's got to be exhausted. We'll be back with the Barrel.com overtime. Four on four hockey coming up as if there isn't enough offense. The folks at Barrel Automotive and Barrel.com are happy to bring you overtime here on Root Sports. A 5-5 score after regulation in a wild hockey game here tonight. The Leafs were up 4-1. Penguins made it 4-2. They made it 5-2. The Penguins made it 5-3, 5-4. Well, there's going to be a lot of magic on the ice here. On the Leafs side of the ledger, Phil Kessel is going to be on the ice. And he's deadly. For the Pittsburgh Penguins, well, you got Crosby and Kunitz. That'll be the first pairing to go out. Then you'll come back with Malkin and Neal, I would imagine. Unbelievable that in a game where both teams are filling the net, that one of them would be outshot 17 to zip in a third period. It's just the craziest game, the game of hockey. You could never have predicted that. Here's Kessel with it. Center stolen away by Crosby. One man back to up. Kunitz making a beeline to the net. Kessel getting back. Crosby swooping. And he'll hang on to it now. And now they'll just set it up in the offensive zone in the four on four situation. Orpin back to the front of the net. Crosby looks for it. Crosby holds it. Over to Anglin. Hangs on to it. Now lets it go wide of the goal. And Derek Anglin had an ample opportunity to join that two on two to make it a three on two. He decided not. Just to be an innocent bystander. He didn't want the Leafs coming the other way if it didn't work out. Puck bounces through in front of Zakoff, who has not had to stop a shot since the second period. Derek Engelin works it ahead to center. Ball in there. Me, well, you tell me the last shot against Zatkoff went in? Latang. That's what I'm telling you, Bobby. He hasn't been a save. Here's a shot by Dupre wide of the goal. He didn't have to make a save in the third. In this game. In this game. That's what I mean. The last shot against him went in. It's insane. It's just a crazy. Oh, boy. That was a little trip by Malk and Paul McClement. <laughs> a subtle little. A little trip. Get away with it. Latang to Dupre. Simone Dupre carries into the attacking zone. Dupre shoots it. And he fired wide. Big heavy shot came off the boards and the Leafs take off the other way with it. It's now some Padre with it down the wing. He left it there for Clarkson and drops it off to Franzen. Cody Franzen back towards the net. Deflected by Padre just wide. Dupre. The heavy shot earlier on the bench now. Niskanen on the right side. Here's Connor closing in, and his shot is off the stick of Fanuf and up into the netting. Niskanen still on as Dupre went to the bench. Every time Connor plays, he plays at an NHL level when he's a part of this hockey team. I'm telling you, look at that pass off the wall to himself. You can't interfere with him, and Fanuf had to get back with the stick. Beautiful play as he uses the wall to get around Cody Franz and. Got some lightning in those blades right now. Does 
Chris Connor looking to cash in in overtime. Still a lot of time. 255 to go in the overtime period. No Bo Bennett, no Paul Martin. Phaneuf off the faceoff. Phaneuf comes to center. Stepping up on him was uh, Olimata and taking the puck is Chris Kunitz. Kunitz stops up, finds Latang. He has to settle that bouncing puck down. Under pressure from Mason Raymond. Great move by Latang to get away from Raymond now. Throws the puck behind the back right on the tape of Raymond. Raymond goes around Latang, closes in. Raymond looks back. He's under enough pressure here that he can't really do much with it, but Phaneuf way up on the blue line shoots it. That hits Kunitz. Crosby fights his way over to the puck to control it and finally does, and now Latang takes the pass. Here's Latang closing in. And Phaneuf reaches around him to poke it away. Now Latang gets back in a defensive position. In fact, he'll go back to the bench, as does Crosby. Fresh players on for Pittsburgh. Hawkins steals the puck near side, but it ends up at center ice where Brooks Orpik will drop it off to Derek Engel. 2.02 to go in the overtime period. Derek Engelin, the center, with Van Riemsdyk on him, Engelin coming towards the goal, and reaching around him at the last second was Gunnarsson. And the puck now is Jokinen, he lost an edge. Kessel takes off for the Leafs. Orpik steps up on Kessel, filling in behind is Van Riemsdyk. Derek Engelin defending on him. Engelin's lost his stick, and it goes back in behind the net where Zakhoff will set it up for Orpik. A minute 37 remaining. Brooks Orpik with those strong strides, comes to center right. Orpik into the lead zone, drops it off to Malkin, swooping into the slot. Malkin holds it, goes left side, looking for Jokinen. Orpik's in front of the net. Jokinen to Malkin, his shot. Bernier juggles it and holds on to it. Yeah, and he took a whack at Bernier as he juggled it. And they have clipped him in the glove, and now he goes by the police bench, and they all grab him. And now he grabs Van Reed's nice stick. Oh, man, this is crazy. Malkin was on a mission, Malkamania right now in Pittsburgh as he gets to the net on Bernier. And he's playing to the whistle. He's playing to the whistle and he's just saying, stop me now. Boy, what an effort. Put forth by 71 Malkin in this hockey game. We saw Crosby down and up, back on the ice, minute 18. He has 40, 44 points in his career against Toronto in 24 games, more than any other team in the league. Malkin, including the three he has here tonight. And now on the near side, Niskanen trying to keep it in. Four on four hockey. And it's going to be taken by Neal. Going to the net is Crosby. Neal in front now for Niskanen. And the pass wasn't there, but Neal goes over and makes sure the puck stays in the offensive zone. Backhands it into the corner. A minute, minute remaining in the overtime. Prozek shuffles it over to McClement. And then offside are the Leafs. And as you know, it only takes one shot in overtime. If the Leafs can find one, and Pittsburgh got the 47 total now in this hockey game. And Bowser pulling Crosby off the ice right now as he's exhausted. There's 55 seconds left. That's enough time to get back on the ice. Shifts average about, especially in overtime, shifts aren't going to be more than 30 seconds. Not on a four and four situation. A five on five, they're typically about 37 to 39 seconds for the average player. Here go the Penguins. Neal shoots it down low. Stick save made by Bernier. Sutter turns the corner, leaves it for Neal. The Prey pinches down the wall. Patrick did a good job of keeping from getting to the puck. The Prey gets back in defensive position. Sutter forces the turnover here. 25 seconds to go in the overtime. And here's Simon to Prey with it. Cross ice. Niskanen fakes the shot, finds Neal up high. Neal banks it off the board for Matt Niskanen. 15 seconds to go. Niskanen tried to center. Nobody was in front except for Gunnarsson to the Leafs. Ahead out of Kadri. The only man back is Dupre. Kadri swings wide. Centers. Niskanen broke it up. Three seconds to go. And we're going to go to a shootout here. And the Leafs still have not registered a shot on goal through an entire period and an entire overtime period. And yet they have a point as we go to the shootout. Brought to you by Barrel.com when we come back. Well, that man will be in a shootout for the Penguins, and we take you back to the very first game of this long stretch of 300 consecutive sellouts. And you know how it ended? It ended in a shootout win for the Penguins over the Chicago Blackhawks. 
So uh, wouldn't it be fitting that uh, maybe the Penguins would end uh, this particular game the 300th consecutive sellout with a shootout win over the Toronto Maple Leafs. Well Game Malkin tonight has really come alive as Zakoff hasn't seen a shot in over an hour. Kenny Malkin with a rocket shot on the power play. A beautiful assist on the power play here in the third. And then there is Gino going to the net. Yeah, That's going to the net. Yeah. Well, he's done a lot of that, Bob. But when I think of that, that play he made in Montreal where he went to the net and crashed into the boards, it's kind of symbolic to me of the fact that Gino has kind of had a renewed vigor in terms of going to the cage to make plays and uh, it's no coincidence I think that all of a sudden he scored goals again. Looking down the Penguin bench Sidney Crosby going through the routine of retaping his stick. You see Jokinen getting a new stick and new gloves for the shootout. And Gino just being Gino. Zakoff getting a good stretch right now. As we mentioned, he hasn't seen a shot in over an hour. The end of the second period was the last time Zakoff had to see any rubber. Probably no more, uh, no warmer than Flurry right now. Kenny Malkin had the shootout winner against Luongo in the Vancouver Canucks, October 19th. With that move to the backhand. Well, Bernier is uh, scraping away that crease there right now. You talk about snow. Well, that snow is taken away by the Zambonis. So Bernier is putting the snow back down. Jokin will shoot first. He takes that usually that wide, wide angle coming down the right, right wing wall. He's got the Forsberg move. He's got the. Turn it to the forehand over the pad shot to the far side and let's see what he goes with. You see Jokinen against Jonathan Bernier. First shooter for the Penguins stops up fires and a blocker save made. Well he tried something a little bit different there a little stop right at the top of the crease right by the hash marks. There's the breaks, cradles the puck, turns it to that forehand, and Bernier stays right with him. There goes Bozak. Against Jeff Zatkoff. Bozak fakes, shoots, save. Oh, I really like how Zatkoff carried the glove high there. Carried it real high, showed the glove. Look, he's got his glove high. Takes away the five hole with the stick. Crosby. Sidney Crosby. He just picks the puck up and carries it in against Bernier. Crosby slows down, around and scores! He tried the poke check and failed. Well, you can't do that against the greatest player in the game. Are you kidding me? That might work about against somebody of a lesser ilk. Sidney Crosby, head up. Goaltender can't make the first move. He did. Crosby held on to the puck. Could it have been any easier? David Clarkson against Zakoff to the backhand and he makes the save. Boy, Zakoff did a great job staying with Clarkson who showed that he was going to shoot high glove. Then he went to the backhand. Am I going to shoot it? No, he pumped the foot as well. Gave it the Ovechkin. It didn't work and he looked at Zakoff in disbelief. We've already named the McDonald's player of the game. He has a chance to win the game right here. Malkin against Bernier. Scores! Game over. Penguins win a wild one tonight here in Toronto, 6-5. to five. What an exclamation point for Gino tonight. Does it get any better? You talk about some crazy moves in the shootout and some finishing ability by two of the greatest in the game and Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin putting on a clinic in the shootout and Zakoff who was cold as ice he didn't see a shot till the end of the second period but when the
game was on the line. Zakoff was up to the challenge. Wow, great stuff. And look at Malkin. He just slowed it down and methodically assessed the situation and put it in the far side over the pad and game over. A team effort here tonight. Uh, you bought, you said it, Bob, very early in this game tonight about how you thought the Penguins could come back when it was four to one, and that's exactly what happened. They went at six to five. Let's go to Robin Jay.